Welcome back kids. This video is by request. I had several people uh, want me to make a video explaining the difference between the touch probe and the tool setter. And by now everybody knows I'm a big proponent of the tool setter and I hope I can demonstrate why in this video. Uh, there is confusion between the two uh, tools but and I can understand that. They have similar function, but they're different too. So hopefully I can explain that and clarify some things so y'all can make a better decision about whether you want a tool setter or not. Uh, Bowler alert, you want a tool setter. Anyway, let's get with it. Okay, we're in VCAR Pro. This is just a simple program I've set up to uh, show the difference between running tool paths without a tool setter and with a tool setter. Uh, we're just simply going to run these first two circles here. No tool setter. I'll be using a quarter inch end mill on the first one and a 60 degree V bit on the second one. Then over here uh, with the tool setter, we're going to do the same thing. Two circles. First one will be with the quarter inch end mill. Second will be with the 60 degree V bit. Uh, but what you need to really pay attention to and notice is how I saved these uh, tool paths. So basically, we've, we've got four tool paths here. The ones without a tool setter, which I've got them named over here, no tool setter, end mill, no tool setter, V60. All right. So, so when I save that, these are saved individually. The no tool setter tool tool paths are saved. Selected tool path save. And then it just saves that as a tool path on its own. And all these are already saved, but there it is. So it's on its own G code file. And I'll cancel that. Uh, same thing with the second one. When I save that one, same thing, selected tool path. I'm saving it by itself. But then down here on these, the uh, with the tool setter, which I named them TS1 and TS2. First one's in mill, second one's VC, uh, 60 degree V bit. So on these, I save these visible tool paths to one file, which means I can save both of those to the same file and just send one file over to the Masso and uh, with the tool setter only you can do this uh, and it will uh, prompt you after the first tool path it'll prompt you to change the tool once you tell it yes I've changed the tool then it's going to measure that tool and send it right on back to work there's no more probing after the very first time you use the probe block to set your X, Y, Z. Okay, these are the three files that uh, I've saved over here. You can see uh, no tool setter in mill one. I'll send it uh, via the Masso, send file. Same thing with the no tool setter two, which is the V60. Just drag and drop it over here, send the file. And then finally, we have these two tool paths combined into one that we call tool setter. Let's drag it over here and see it. Okay. okay, here are the three files we just sent over to the Masso. Uh, the first one we're going to run is the no tool setter in mill one. Got it highlighted, so I'll load that. All right, now we need to. Uh, probe or XYZ. So let me go to it. I'm going to keep my fingers on it while I probe it because if I don't, the brush on the uh, dust boot will move the probe. So probing Y. Okay, and then X. Okay, now we just need to do the Z. Raise it up. Move it over a little bit. Probe Z. All right. 
We're finished with the block for now. So we got F2. We've got that program loaded. I just hit rewind. And cycle start. All right, first one is run. So now we need to load that second tool path, which is no tool setter number two with the V60, which is a 60 degree groovy genie. We need to load that one. And go into program MDI, which is the F2. Rewind cycle start and it'll come up here for me to change the bit so let me do that right quick all right Reprobe the Z. Now we can run the program. Rewind. Cycle start. All right, so that was uh, running two tool paths without the tool setter. Uh, we did have to reprobe the Z between the two tool paths. So let's do this same exercise with the tool setter and see the difference. Okay, now we're going to load the tool setter tool path, which contains the first and the second one, but they're just saved in this one file. We'll load that up. See, now we have two circles over here, and we need to change the router bit, so let's just go into, uh, we've got it loaded, rewind, start, come up here, and let me change the bit, so let's do that. All right, now we need to uh, remeasure the Z. I'm going to, I think I'm going to go ahead and do the X, Y, and the Z. So let's put our block back up there. All right, we're going to finish probing the Z. Move the block, and we're through with it. Exit the probing. I've already did the X and Y. Go to the F2, rewind, cycle start. It should come over here and cut that uh, to a first tool path. Notice when it finishes, it'll come back up here and it'll stop right over top of the tool setter. Now it's prompting me to load that tool, so that's what I'll do. All right, I got the 60 degree groovy genie in there, and it's telling me to get cycle start and when I do we're not going to have to run it back over here and use the probe 
or through the probe. It's going to measure that bit. So let me just hit cycle start. It'll measure it and go over there and cut that final circle. No probe. <laughs> And also notice the vacuum's kicking on by itself. Uh, and when it finishes this circle, the gantry will move to the back of the machine and park. Okay, it's shutting down the spindle. It's fixing to turn off the vacuum. Now it's going to the back to park. All of that is because of the modified post processor that I did. Uh, in a previous video if you want to know how to do that and I highly recommend that you do go back and watch that post processor video I did it and it, uh, it it's a big improvement to your machine I can assure you that that's it for this one kids thank y'all so much for watching I hope you uh, were able to get something from this video to uh, maybe clarify some of those questions that you had uh, about the difference between the touch probe and the tool setter. Uh, this was uh, really one of the more complicated videos that I've had to do, and it took me a lot longer to do this one. I reshot it like four times, uh, trying to keep things as simple as I could, but still cover the detail, and that, was, that wasn't easy to do. So anyway, I, I hope it came through okay for y'all. If this is the first video of mine that you've watched and you notice that my machine is doing all kinds of cute tricks, <laughs> parking and turning the back on and off and spindle on and off and all those good things, uh, and of course the tool setter, I've covered all of that in previous videos. So if you have questions about any of those things, you could probably get the answers in those previous videos. And if not, hey, just leave me a comment and let me know what you uh, do have a question about. And also, if you have uh, requests for uh, something you'd like to see me do a video on, put that in the comment below too. That'll really help me too, because uh, it's starting to get a little bit more difficult to come up with these uh, ideas for the video. So y'all help me out on that. I'd appreciate it. So anyway, that's it for this one. Uh, I appreciate y'all watching. I'm over 700 subscribers now. Yay. Uh, thank y'all so much, and I'll see you on the next one. And to do that, we go back to the F2 screen, and all we got to do is hit cycle start. <laughs> yeah, that's all we got to do.